get a little more energy. <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going? Tim here from the Lancaster Smokehouse, and today we are making barbecue pizza at home. I'm at my home here in Listowel. The actual pizza itself is the best pizza recipe you're gonna have for a home oven. It makes like actual delicious pizza, not just good for homemade. So let's get to it. So I've got this uh, pizza dough recipe that I've worked on for quite a while. I've became very obsessed with pizzas lately. Variation on one of my favorite chefs, Kenji Lopez Alt. I've tweaked it just a little bit. This is for one pizza dough. You can double it to make two. I have some double O Italian flour. So it's just like really, really, really fine. It's good for pizza and pastas, but all purpose works fine. I've got a scale right here. Super important for baking. Don't measure stuff in cups and in tablespoons anymore. Come on, come on. That's for amateurs. Let's get real. I sound like such a So first thing we need to do is 200 grams of flour. Got my scale zeroed out. And spoonfuls are usually about 50 grams. So there's one, two, three, four. We are at 170. Let me make sure I did the math right. 193, 199. 199. Next up, I have some malt powder. You don't have to use malt powder. It can be a little tricky to find. What it does is it just adds a lot of flavor to your uh, pizza dough without having to take so much time to kind of develop those flavors. It's using a lot of New York style pizza. We're using it kind of as a bit of flour. So we got 200 grams of flour here. I'm gonna add 25 grams of malt. 225 grams all together now. After I've measured out all my dry ingredients, I am going to do 65% hydration. Tim, what does that mean? I'm not a baker. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> so here we have 225 grams of flour plus a little malt. So that brought it up to 225. Now we're gonna add 65% water and that is going to be 100 and... 12, to 12, 112 grams of water. So I got my flour, malt, measured out. Put it into my food processor. Some people who make doughs all the time, who are used to using a stand mixer like I have behind me, they might say, Tim, why are you using a food processor? It makes it quicker because it cuts through, helps form the gluten development, blah, 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 blah. Science is boring, pizza's tasty. So next, I need to do five grams of salt. Two grams of yeast, so we're going up to 7%, or sorry, seven grams. Oh, this is a mess. Next up, we're gonna add our dough enhancer slash bread booster. You can buy this at the grocery store. Four grams. Well, I did way more than four grams. That was like 10. Two grams of sugs. Get that up to 15 grams total. That's all done. So that's gonna go right into here. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Take the top off. And now we just have to measure out our water. Lukewarm room temperature water. So 112 grams. 113, not too bad. So with the machine on, I'm just gonna pour in the water and you're gonna see when it starts coming together, it's almost gonna form like a bit of a ball. But we're gonna add a little bit of oil. If you want a crust that has more golden brown, like a New York style slice, add a little bit of oil, just a tiny bit. I should be measuring it out, but I've already messed up so much of the measuring. So I'm just gonna go and add probably like less than a teaspoon. Let it run for one minute. You want your food processor to move around the table as much as possible. All right, perfect. This is actually feeling really good. It's nice and hydrated and it's quite moist, but it's not like super sticky and tacky. Roll it into a ball, Tupperware container here, put the lid on so it doesn't dry out. I set it aside for three hours. Then you just knock it down, form it into a ball again, let it rise for another three hours. And uh, then you're ready to make some pizza. Pizza dough done. All right, so while the dough is kicking back, relaxing, we're gonna make our pizza sauce. Super, super simple. You don't need to cook it. You don't need to add a whole lot to it. You just need to make sure that you get really good tomatoes. The best canned tomatoes right here, Bianco di Napoli, insanely delicious. I've used lots of other brands. I've used my own. These just blow the rest out of the water. I'm just gonna make the sauce right in the can here. Why dirty another dish when you don't need to? It's gonna be fun to mix it up too. Not. Nah. We're gonna season these tomatoes that are in here. Good pinch of salt. I love oregano in my pizza, so we're gonna add some of that. 
one single garlic clove. It does not take much. Grate it over top. And that's all you need to do. We'll mix it up really well, taste it, see if we need anything else to it. You can add some olive oil. I don't like to do it because I find that it can make your pizza just a little more greasy than you want it to be. Taste it, perfect. That's all you need. Buttermilk ranch. It is the bomb. Simple recipe and what we're gonna do is at the end we're gonna drizzle it on our pizza. Everybody likes to dip their pizza in ranch. Why not just drizzle it right on top? Equal parts sour cream and mayo. So I've probably got about a quarter cup of each so far. I'm gonna add just a couple tablespoons of buttermilk. So just a little splash of white vinegar. Boom. That's gonna make that really tangy ranch that you're used to. Pinch of salt. Lots and lots of black pepper. We're going to be here grinding for a while. Just basically do it until you're bored. Then we need a little bit of sugar. So we're kind of seasoning it with sugar, just like we did the salt. And then last but not least, lots of really finely chopped fresh dill. Mix it up, taste it. If you're happy with it, I'm happy with it. Mm. Mm. I wish I had more mayonnaise. <laughs> yes, it was behind the naan bread. So I want to make it a little bit thicker so it, uh, you know, so that you can kind of squeeze it onto the pizza nice. Look at that, perfect. All we needed was a little more mayo. Nice and thick. Let's taste it again. Mmm, it's good. Okay. So this is a mozzarella. Do not splurge and go and get like the buffalo mozzarella or the really fresh stuff that's still like in the way. It's just gonna make your pizza a soupy mess. You wanna pretty much buy the cheapest mozzarella that you can. It's just gonna be the better cheese for a pizza. And don't overload your pizza with cheese. Resist the temptation. Less is more in this case. That will be tons. And boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> I'm just full of late 2000s references. Oh, what, oh, oh, what is that? Is that Lancaster Smokehouse? Full of love hot barbecue sauce? Ooh, yeah, it is. We've got some green onions here. Let's probably get, oh, I think one of those is gonna be fine. Slice some of that nice and thin on a bit of a diagonal. Oh, what is, what is this, John? Oh, wow, look, that's some Lancaster Smokehouse pulled pork. Vacuum sealed, taken out of the freezer and defrosted, ready to go on some delicious barbecue pizzas. That's good stuff. I've got my oven preheating at max temperature. Whatever that is for your oven, put it to max. And I have my pizza steel in there. Use a pizza steel or a pizza stone. And that is what's gonna really cook the underside of your pizza so it's not soggy and limp like a lot of homemade pizzas are. It's been going for at least an hour now. I got my pizza peel. I have semolina, which is basically finely ground cornmeal. And I think we are ready to make our pizza. So from here on out, this is like go time. Go! Okay. Get a little bit of your flour and get it sprinkled onto your work surface. Pizza dough out onto that surface. Try and keep it in its shape. Get some of that flour on it, maybe a little more flour. I didn't do enough. And then just with your hands, kind of use gravity as your friend here to pull the pizza and to stretch that dough. I've been pretty gentle with it so that I'm not knocking all of the air out of it so that I still get like little air bubbles and stuff. And we're just gonna keep doing this until this is basically the size of our pizza peel. Before I get it on my peel, I'm quickly gonna turn my oven up to broil. Pizza peel, this is like a 14 incher. We got some flour on our pizza peel. Then we got to get a little bit of this semolina slash cornmeal, whatever you want to use. Just get it nice and even. This is one of the parts where you just kind of have to hold your breath and hope that you transition it okay. Perfect. Stretch it to the size of the peel like so. Happy with that. Give it a little jiggle. Oh, it's still loose. Good. We want it to slide off easy when we go into the oven. Get your pizza sauce. Probably started with about four tablespoons or so, so like a quarter cup. Take some Parmesan. I think of this as a salt, basically. This is like really, really salty. So we're just gonna grate some of that right onto our pizza and it's gonna season it a little bit. Next up, cheese. Less cheese than you think you need. So we're not even gonna come close to using all the cheese that's on this. Now it's ready for the pulled pork and then we're gonna pop it in the oven. I'm gonna get little pieces of my pulled pork and I'm gonna kind of clump them. I don't wanna spread it too thin or else it could go dry. It's ready for takeoff, still coming off nice and cleanly. Got my broiler set. This is the hardest part. Just be confident, push it off onto your peel or your stone. Oh, the kid's good. Set a timer or get a little mental timer going. Two minutes, got another pizza peel. And I have a cooling rack here. If you were to put it straight onto a cutting board or whatever, 
the bottom would steam and then you would lose kind of that crispiness that you worked for. Drop that back down off of broiler. Now it's at like that full heat uh, oven temperature. All right, it's good. We're taking it out. Ooh, yeah. Cheese bubbling away, all that fat. Now we got to finish it up with the garnishes. I've got some of the Lancaster Smokehouse full of love hot sauce. We've got smoky, sweet, and hot. They're all delicious. They'll all work great. Next up, we've got our homemade ranch here. And we're just going to do kind of the same idea. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, hello. Finish it up with a little green onion and a little bit of dill. And there you have it, folks. Lancaster Smokehouse, barbecue, pulled pork pizza. Get on over here and taste it, fellas. Let's test her out. Mm. I'm the best.